Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today I'm gonna to be going over five quick tips to look better instantly. And I actually think a lot of guys overlook these things, even though they are incredibly easy and simple to do. So again, I'm gonna be going over five quick and easy tips to make you look better and more put together without any fuss. Number one, we have layering. And you've probably heard it before, girls love layers, but really layers just add a lot of dimension to your outfit and make a boring outfit look a little bit more put together and exciting. And layering is something that you really don't have to be an expert in in order to do it well. All you have to do is throw on a cool jacket and you'll pretty much be good to go. Of course, you'll wanna keep in mind the weather of where you live. If you live somewhere that's very warm, obviously you don't want to be wearing a ton of layers and sweating bullets because in that case, you probably wouldn't look and better or refreshed or polished and put together you would probably look worse so definitely keep the weather of where you live in mind so say you're wearing a plain white t-shirt a dark pair of denim and a cool pair of sneakers if you want to spice that outfit up a little bit you could just throw on a cool suede jacket or a bomber jacket or really any kind of jacket to kind of up your outfit game a little bit there and this is something that's extra easy to do in the fall and winter if you live somewhere that gets a little bit cold there are a ton of different jacket options out there I've actually done an entire video on jackets that every guy needs so if you haven't seen that and you don't know where to start, definitely be sure to go check that out. Even if you aren't necessarily throwing on a jacket, you could easily add a sweater over a button down to create a really chic and sophisticated put together look. There are many different ways to play around with layering, but just find something that works for you, where you live, and obviously what you're going to be doing on a daily basis. Number two, we have mastering texture and patterns. Now, if you're getting really far into the mixing pattern and texture world, it can be a little bit difficult, but I want all of you guys to understand is that even if you're a beginner, even if you've never done this before, there are really easy ways to do this and make it really easy for yourself and still look amazing. So it doesn't have to be incredibly complicated. Really knowing the basics here is going to get you pretty far. So I'm gonna go over a quick little kind of synopsis of mixing textures and patterns, but really this could be an entire standalone video on its own because it can get pretty complicated and intricate if you really get down to the nitty gritty. So there are basically four categories to keep in mind when you're mixing patterns and textures. Number one being checks and plaids. Two is stripes. Three will be repeat patterns like polka dots, paisleys, things like that. And then four will be textures like houndstooth, hop sack, things like that. So you want to mix different patterns. So you wouldn't want to mix a thick stripe with a thin stripe because those are in the same category. You would want to maybe mix a stripe with a repeat print or a texture instead of mixing two in the same category. So that's a super easy place to start. And if you're a little bit nervous to branch out here and mix two different patterns, I would recommend mixing one pattern with a solid. This is a simple, very easy choice. And for all of you guys, again, that are starting out, this is an incredibly quick and easy way to add a little bit of spice to your outfit without making it a little bit nerve-wracking for yourself and kind of branching too far into the mixing pattern world. My next little thing to keep in mind here is that size matters. In the case of mixing patterns and textures, size does matter. So an example here, you wouldn't want to mix a large stripe with a large repeat pattern. You really want to offset the scale a little bit here and not have all of your prints be in the same size category. So maybe mixing a very tiny repeat pattern like a paisley with a medium stripe or something like that that's going to complement each other instead of compete with each other, which leads me into my next little point here, which is know your strengths. And by this, I mean the strength of the pattern. So again, you don't want to have two very loud patterns competing with each other. You want to do maybe a more bold pattern with a subtle pattern that is kind of unnoticeable, that kind of just fades into the outfit and they just complement each other really nicely. So knowing your strengths and knowing the size difference is very important when it comes to pattern mixing. But again, that kind of makes this little tip on my list a little bit more complicated. So know that you can mix patterns and textures and make it very easy for yourself by choosing one and mixing with a solid or mixing with a texture. So if you are just starting out, understand that there are easy ways to do this and don't be intimidated. Next, I have accessorizing or statement pieces. It is all in the details and often adding just a little bit of flair goes a long way. Of course, you really wanna keep your outfit in mind here, but do not be afraid to add accessories. I think some guys hear the word accessories and they automatically are like, heck no, never going there. But really think about a watch, a tie, 
high bar, sunglasses. I mean, I could go on and on. You really wanna find what works for you, your style, and your outfit specifically, but these go a long way. It's all in the details and it makes a huge difference. Accessories are just a great way to spice up your outfit and make you stand out in a good way. We don't wanna be Johnny Depping it here. I've said that a bunch on my channel. I think some people do a little bit too much and it kind of defeats the purpose of standing out in a good way. You don't wanna stand out in a bad way and that is why less is more. If accessories really aren't your thing, but you want to still find a way to stand out, I would recommend adding a fragrance. So while you can't necessarily see it, you can definitely smell it, and engaging other senses is a great way to appear more attractive and also stand out, especially if your crush goes in for a hug. Number four, I've got facial hair grooming. So taking care of your facial hair and really just your grooming in general seems like something that would be so small, but it actually makes a huge difference. Just like everything else on this list, sometimes you think these are little things that go unnoticed, but they actually make the biggest impact for you. So keeping everything well-groomed and well-maintained goes a long way, whether this be with your hair, your facial hair, your nails, I mean, really just your grooming in general. Such small things, but really they do make a drastic difference. And I think a lot of guys often look better with a little facial hair. So if you're someone that is able to grow facial hair and you wanna keep a little bit of stubble, maybe you wanna clean things up, but you don't wanna necessarily shave it down all the way. So using a safety blade instead of doing a clean shave with a razor can also be a really great idea for you guys if you don't necessarily love the way that you look with a baby face. I personally love a little bit of stubble on a guy. That five o'clock shadow is my absolute favorite. So if you don't wanna to commit to shaving down to your baby face, I would recommend using a safety blade. And if you're a guy that's rocking a beard, just keep it well-groomed, healthy, clean, and well-maintained to make sure everything is looking spiffy. You don't wanna look all unkempt and overgrown. And often the way that you clean up your facial hair and the hair on your head makes a huge difference. Have you ever seen before and after of a guy that got a haircut that had not gotten a haircut in a while. It's like plastic surgery. It really does make a huge difference and instantly just makes you look more refreshed, polished, and put together. And my number five tip for all of you is to go for the classics. So many times in my channel, I've stressed the importance of building a meaningful wardrobe and really going for the classics instead of what's trendy. A good rule of thumb is that your wardrobe should be about 80% classics and basics. And then if you're into trends, it could be about 20% trends. So I would say that is the minimum for classics. My wardrobe is probably probably 90% classics and 10% trendy because I really don't like to go after the trends. I have found that the classics save me money. I get more versatility out of them and longevity because they are nicer, uh, more classic pieces that I can pair with so many other things in my wardrobe rather than just continuing to buy a trendy one-off piece that doesn't look good with anything I have and it's just going to sit in the back of my closet and collect dust and be a waste of my money. So another thing to keep in mind here is that finding clothes that work for you and your body type is incredibly important and the fit of your clothes trumps absolutely everything else. So instead of going out and trying to get a bunch of trendy items that just don't work on you, stick to the classics and stick to the things that you know work for you and your body type. These will 99% of the time look better than anything trendy or anything that's going to just be out in a season. And don't forget the basics make the best outfits. Fashion does not have to be complicated and you don't have to be wearing what's trendy right now in order to look good. It is okay to have a little bit of fun with your outfits if you're someone who likes to experiment with things and buy a trendy piece every now and then, but it should not be the majority. The people who fill their closet with all of the trendy pieces and never go for the classics are the same people who say, I have nothing to wear, even though they have a closet full of clothes. So we don't want that to be you. We really wanna build a meaningful capsule wardrobe that's going to get the most bang for your buck and give you the most versatility to be able to build the most outfits that you possibly can. So that is all I have for five easy, quick tips to look better instantly. I hope that you all found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. I think everything on this list is pretty easy to implement into your daily routine, which is why I chose these five things. And really just keep these in mind when you're going forward, when you're buying new clothes, when you're getting ready in the morning, just keep these little things in mind to make sure that you always look your best. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. Let me know in the comments down below what your number one thing is for looking better instantly. If you have any tips, tips or tricks to share with the guys, please let us know down below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.